And um, you know, how can you not be when you've, we, we don't really know what we're doing here or what we're meant to do with it? You know? So there's the continual questioning going on, which I think is good, but you know, it's, it's the way human beings are. You know? There's uh, a lot of ironies put together in life. You know? it's, it, nothing is really that straightforward, is it? there becomes some big discovery, which in a way I think um, is in a, uh, used well on the next project. Mm. Um, and it's that during that particular album project you're learning um, how, to, how to do it. So I think it's all a big learning process, really. Um, each time I start an album, it's like a new adventure. It's like starting from scratch, in a way. Where does your main strength come from? Come from your family or from your music? I think that's a very difficult question because my family are very important to me and have been around since I was born, whereas my music is something that came much later. But there's such a personal involvement with my music that's very much um, inspired by people, but it's a very private thing and it's very much a release for me. I think I get a tremendous amount of support from my family, which is very important to me. And I don't know if music supports you. It's not necessarily a comforting thing, but it's it's just it's it's like a very close friend, I guess. Don't give up, cause you have friends. Don't give up, you're not beaten yet. Listening to your albums from the very first to the most recent, there's a change in your voice, and it seems that your voice is, is lower and a little more aggressive, as if you're working harder at punching out the lyrics. It's very different from the listener, for the listener, as it is for me, because lyrics have always been very important for me. And, you know, all people go through phases of, of things they try out. And at that period when I made the first album, I was very much experimenting with the higher vocal range. It was just something I wanted to try out. And um, also the production has a tremendous amount to do with things like that. The voice level, um, it makes a big difference as to how the voice comes across. But I, my voice has changed a lot, and I think that is basically what I see as the difference, that as I've grown up, my voice has grown up with me, it's become stronger. And I can do things now with my voice that were not easy for me to do, um, you know, years ago. Has your voice lost any of its range? I can get up there if I need to, mm -hmm. but um, I just prefer working in this range now. I think a lot of females go through that. Um, if you listen to Joni Mitchell, her early stuff is very high, and with each album she gets lower and lower. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a progressive thing for people. I'm looking at the big sky. collaborating with her on Dreaming? Was that the first album you worked with? No, no, no. I was actually a member of the very first band she had together back in 1977. Really? Yeah, we got that band together. Um, I was playing lots of small bands at that time and uh, 
we decided that we've got to get a new angle on this, you know. And um, I knew her brother Paddy, so we decided that what we'd do is we'd try and um, get together a pub band. And what we really needed was a different angle. And the different angle we came up with was a, a, a female singer. Who did we know that had a fee, you know, a, a good singer? And oh, of course, Paddy's sister. So she was well into it straight away, you know. We were into the whole thing, you know. We were playing pubs using dry ice and stuff, you know. I mean, for us, it was great, you know. Bloody hell, what's going on here? There's a huge audience, you know. We're playing away. And uh, she was just fantastic. We were doing James and the Cold Gun with dry ice and all that kind of stuff. It was very much an embryonic version of the stage show we did in 79, you know. And that's where I, I first met Kate. It was, it was back, way back in se early 77 when we had that band together. And um, I didn't actually contribute too much to her first album except some artwork on the back. But from the um, Lionheart album, I was pl involved in the playing side. And eventually it moved into mixing engineering, essentially. Yeah, that's right. Well, it, it kind of went along with the whole um, thing. We, we wanted to set up a demo studio, so we didn't have to waste money, you know, paying f to do demos. So we set up a small eight-track demo studio in, in one of the barns at her parents' house. And, um, of course, you know, nobody was interested at all, you know. So I thought, well, somebody's got to do it, so I'll do it, you know. And I really got off on it. I really enjoyed it, you know, as well as the playing. I actually enjoyed getting sounds for people and, you know, exploring the whole possibility. And it ended up that when we did the Lionheart album and the, the album after that, um, we found we were trying to recreate the demos all the time. You know, we keep referring back to the demos and saying, well, look, that's got a really nice atmosphere. You know, uh, how come we can't recreate this? And so the logical progression was to turn the 8-track studio into a proper mastering studio and take away the whole demo thing and work straight onto tape, which is what we started to do. And I kind of uh, developed as an engineer along with the studio. As the studio got bigger and more expansive, so did I, basically, you know. And uh, my involvement now is, is I probably have more involvement than anybody else in what she does, you know. And I say that very modestly uh, because, I mean, I don't really feel that anybody has that much involvement in what she does. It, it all comes out of her own head, really, you know. We just try and contribute a little bit here and there, you know. It's very important to me to work with people who, um, ideally, I've worked with a long time. Um, there's many musicians, as well as people like Del, who, uh, the more we work, the more it's just this sense of, you just know each other so well, you don't really have to communicate with words. You know, a lot of that's all been done years ago. You've got all that out of the way. And uh, I suppose in some ways it was particularly pleasing on this album that um, I was able to work with uh, a lot of people in a much more um, direct way who, who are old friends, who've, uh, people like Stuart Elliott, who's been on every album now. And to actually work with them on rhythm tracks rather than bringing them in at a much later removed stage, uh, it was really good. And it's very important to me that, um, that I trust the people that I work with. And, and I feel very comfortable, for instance, working with Del. A lot of what I do is, it is quite personal, and in some ways I'm quite a shy performer about uh, trying ideas out. And um, I feel very comfortable working with Del in a way that I don't think there's, there's not many people I would feel that way with. So it's very important to me to have that kind of uh, um, trust in, in such a, an intimate situation, because most of the time, it's either just myself or, or Dan and myself, and the musicians are brought in at stages, so you know, you've got to have good communication. <laughs> Dave Gilmore, who introduced you to the powers that be in the record industry. Uh, do you still maintain a friendship with him? Dave is, really, he's my hero. He's, <laughs> he's fantastic. I mean, without Dave, I doubt very much if things would have taken the course as quickly as they did. Um, I think he was very kind and brave to do what he did, because I was just a kid writing songs, really, and um, he was introduced to us and came and heard the songs, and from there, it was him that uh, really got me the record contract. 